welcome back Jujitsu 2000 here today I'm coming at you with a quick interesting video for you today today I want to talk about Coleman products more specifically I want to talk about the pump on a Coleman product and let's take that a little step deeper the check valve inside of the pump now for those of you who might not understand what the check valve does is the check valve is basically a one-way valve okay so when you pump your stove or your tank or whatever your lantern when you're pumping what's happening with the check valve is the check valve is letting air go in to the tank but not out it stops it okay so it'll let air go in all day long but it'll stop it from coming out now occasionally um, we have moments where we have faulty check valves and that's what this video today is about nine times out of ten you don't need to remove the check valve but in the rare event that you do I'm gonna show you how I've found to remove this because they can be kinda difficult so stay with me okay right now I'm looking at a tank okay this tank is off of one of my dual fuel stoves the tank I believe has a faulty check valve and the reason I think that is because when you open this up and you put let's say I don't know let's give it 30 pumps just for the video go ahead and close this thing I'm keeping my thumb against it okay everything's fine we're pressurized no big problem but sometimes when you don't close this tight enough and it's very rare that I see this but on this tank it's a good example when I loosen this listen and you'll hear air escaping You hear all that air? Hopefully, hopefully you got that. Long as my thumb is over the hole, it's fine. But hear that? That tells me that we have a faulty check valve because you should never get air pushing out of this little hole back against your thumb. If that happens, we need to inspect so I'm gonna take this apart you see bear with me let me get a good grip on it hopefully I'm not like right in the middle of the camera I'm trying not to be so it's not the pump it's not the pump stem it's down inside let's take a, a closer look down inside you see that brass fitting okay my friends that is the check valve now you can try to take a large screwdriver something like that and when you stick the large screwdriver down in there sometimes it fits and sometimes it don't and sometimes you'll you'll sit there and you'll work on it and you'll work on it and all you'll find is that it keeps slipping now you can go online and you can buy a check valve tool they're like 30 bucks and in my opinion it's a bit of an overkill so what I've done is I've found a spade bit now this is a three-quarter inch spade bit but I've uh, I've found one that was a half inch okay and I've taken my grinder and I grind it straight down flat right here so it's kind of like this and I chuck it into my drill again it's a half inch paddle bit or spade bit and it's got a flat end on it and that's what I use to remove my check valves so hopefully we'll be able to get that to work for us so this is a closer look at my spade bit 
Okay, you can see that I just grind it down so it's like a big thick screwdriver almost. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to reach down in there and get 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 it where it's in there and I'm going to back it out. This is a difficult process, so don't don't by any means think that this is simple. That, my friends, is my check valve. So basically, if you take like a regular screwdriver, and you can see how beat up the end of this thing is, it's obvious that I've been trying to take it out several times. And it looks like, you know, I may have had my screwdriver and my screwdriver, screwdriver may have slipped and kind of cut it right here. You can tell that this thing has been, I've been having issues trying to get it out that little stainless steel ball inside of this brass is supposed to let air go in but not out so I'm gonna clean this up and uh, see what we can find here maybe I can get it to work okay I have some regular carb cleaner I'm gonna just kinda squirt in here make sure you got some eye protection on when you do this you don't wanna get this stuff in your eyes I'm just trying to clean this area. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this air. Yeah, you can hear that thing jumping around in there now. Make sure it's good and clean. So that thing's ready to go. I was going to put some penetrating oil on it maybe some oil but I'm thinking you know what I might just leave this thing dry because it seems to be working pretty good right now the next thing I'm gonna do before I put this back together is I need to get inside of this tank see all that junk in there that's what I need to clean so I'm going to take my screwdriver and just kind of push this towel down in there. Just kind of move this around. And what I'm hoping for is I'm hoping to just clean this whole tank area up, down, in the bottom, down by where that check valve goes. Just kind of cleaning this area. This will also help it pump a little more, a little bit better. Just kind of cleaning, reaching around there, you know, because sometimes, you know, over time when you put oil in these things, they get dirty. Obviously, oil gets built up inside. And so we're just trying to clean. You know, you'll get better compression too out of your pump if you have any kind of buildup around the cylinder walls, if you will, around the walls of this. Let's put that rag in there one more time just to make make sure that I got that thing about as clean as I can get it. I stick my pinky down in there because I'm feeling the tank to see how it feels. At this point I'm going to get my check valve ready to install. I have some fingernail polish and you're probably thinking I'm kinda crazy but what I like to do with this fingernail polish is I like to polish up the threads on things just like so. Doesn't need to be a lot this will work as a almost like a Loctite. It's a very loose one. It doesn't hold things Gorilla tight or anything, but it will kind of hold them in position. Plus, another thing that it does that I like is it will seal the threads. So, if there was any air that was going to escape from this tank, 
because of those threads, we're now minimizing that. So from here, I'm going to take my regular long screwdriver and I'm just going to drop that check valve down. It's kind of hard to see from your point of view, but I have to look from my point of view. And I'm just screwing this check valve down in there. Nothing too crazy, folks. Here at the end, I'm going to grab my, my drill and I'm just going to put a mild little crank on it. I don't need it to be gorilla tight, okay? I just need to snug it up a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to find the... There we go. Let's go a little bit tighter. That's plenty tight. Now let's go ahead and reinstall our stem. I'm going to clean it first. And this stem, what it does is it goes right down in the middle of the tank down into the center of the check valve down there. There's that little hole. That's where that stem goes. So all the way down right in almost like you're aiming for a bullseye. So we're just going to spin that thing tight. And from here I'm going to take our pump and it looks like the pump has plenty of oil on it already, but I'm a firm believer. I'm going to put one or two drops up top. One, two. Then I'm going to start to insert the pump into the, into the tank. And I'll probably put two more drops. That's probably plenty. Now let's lock this play, piece into place. And I'm just kind of checking to see how it's going to feel. Let's unlock and let's give it about 30 pumps and see what happens. Look at that. No leaks. No leaks at all. Let's give it a little more. Normally before when I took my thumb off the, the pump here, it was leaking. We're not getting that anymore. Folks, we have a repaired check valve on a Coleman tank. Pretty cool. You know, I was originally thinking that I was going to have to replace it. Well, folks, I want to say thanks for watching today. I hope you found some good, useful information out of the video today. Please feel free, as always, to like this video, share this video to your friends. If you like the content that you see on my channel, please subscribe. And as always, have a beautiful day. We'll see you next time. That's the trick to those check valves. Half inch spade bit with the grinder works really good. I'm sure you could probably do the same with a big, wide, heavy-duty screwdriver too, so keep that in mind. Um, one thing that I want to mention before I go is if you're going to use a large screwdriver and you're going to be trying to back that check valve out, take you a mallet or a, a light hammer and tap on that the end of that screwdriver as you're turning it. And a lot of times that'll break these things loose too. Have a beautiful day. Bye.